Hello, hello. It is Dr. Chris Raquel and I am back again with a video for today. I hope you all are doing absolutely amazingly. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in the content that I do. You can also send me an email at askcrystalraquel at gmail.com if you have any questions or concerns or would like to see me do a particular topic or if you would like to ask me a question that you'd like to see me answer on video. So day 13 of our 14 days of change we are almost there tomorrow is our last day and i hope this has really strengthened you and refreshed you and i'm excited to hear about all of your testimonies so i already mentioned that the topic for today was going to be about joseph from the bible but i just wanted to reiterate that this 14 days of change is really just to make sure that we are on the right path it's essentially a fast, but instead of food, we were to be doing exercise every single day, 20 minutes, moderate or high intensity exercise, or 30 minutes of low intensity exercise. And I wanted to do this because I did this last year with you all as well. It was the 21 days of change. And also in 2022, I did something similar just on my own and it really helped me by being dedicated to exercising every day and also making sure I was praying. So I, I just wanted to introduce it to everyone and I hope it's been working out for you as well. Um, you could also do an extension or do it for another period of time in the future if you want. So, okay. So now onto the topic. Anyway, I hope your day has been going amazing. I hope your week has been going well. This is the second week, so I hope the last 13 days have been amazing for you all. And I hope you're joyful and you have peace and everything like that too. So, all right. So I want to talk about the story of Joseph from the Bible. Um, he speaks to how things can easily change in someone's life. So for those of you who don't know, Many of you may know who Joseph was, but Joseph in the Bible, he was one of, I believe, 11. There was He had 11 siblings. And the interesting thing about Joseph was that he, I guess you could say he was kind of brilliant in a way, but in a way he was really just an ordinary person. The thing about Joseph was that his father really loved Joseph. It always says that whenever... Whenever somebody talks about Joseph and his father, it's like his father loved him. He was loved by his father. So he was the favorite of his father. There were things that would happen. Sometimes, you know, his brothers would mistreat him. Joseph would, you know, try to get support from his 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 father. And I think there was a scenario where he might have like tattled on his brother, but it wasn't necessarily tattling. It was more so that he was was telling his father regarding something that was right or wrong but let's not focus on that part of the story so he was loved by his father his father gave him a coat of many colors it was a beautiful jacket filled with all these different colors and he gave it to him because that was his preferred child well some of you may know the backstory to that as well but it just so happened that he had two wives and the wife that he didn't really want was the one that was having all these kids. So I believe Joseph was the first child from the wife that he actually loved. I think that's partly why he loved him so much. But anyway, it's very important that when you have children that you are fair to them. So what ends up happening to Joseph is not his fault whatsoever. But unfortunately, we can see how things led to the to, to what ended up happening to him before he was finally redeemed and raised so basically joseph had dreams he had a dream and in the dream it was the sun and the moon bowing down before him and there was a certain number of sun of this um i'm sorry sun moon and stars i believe or maybe we're sorry moon and the stars and the stars were representative of his brothers and when he's told this dream, his brothers realized that in the future, they were going to be bowing down to him. So that made them very jealous. And I wanted to just, I'm not going to go into the whole entire story, but I want to just go into the fact of how his father essentially made him a target. 
one if you have children you have to treat them fairly and I'm bringing this up because there are some parents they may not even realize that realize that they're doing it for whatever reason they may prefer a certain child and you as a parent you are supposed to treat your children fairly you don't say oh i like this child more they look like me oh i like this child more they act like me and there's some even in some families just to give an example there might even be a father he might have multiple sons let's just say he has five sons and he may have a preference for the the son that he i guess thinks is the most handsome and that's not good those things are not good another parent um a mother might have a preference for a daughter who she thinks thinks like her um and those sorts of things you cannot do that do that as a parent your job remember your children come from you so your job is to raise them up as best as you can so then that way they will always be able to function always be able to treat others well and just learn and become a, a well-functioning adult so that was jacob's fault by him you know giving special treatment and then and there's some families where you know if a parent prefers a child over another they'll treat them better or they'll kind of incite issues between siblings like let's say there's a, a family of like like seven kids um there may be a parent who they like a child a little bit better just because it reminds them of them or maybe the child is interested in the same sports as them or the child is interested in the same sorts of things as them or they just might like the way that they look better they might like the way that they dress better something that makes them feel good about themselves so they will show preferential treatment that is not okay as you can see i'm going to just talk a little about the story with joseph because of that jealousy giving him a cold joseph having those dreams they, they're saying uh-uh ain't no way we're gonna let this guy think that we're gonna bow down to him in the future please they were very jealous and they were had a lot of evil in their heart they really wanted to they ended up trying to one brother suggested that they kill him and then the other brother suggested that they sell him so my point is after them doing all those things to Joseph and he ended up no longer being with his family because he was sold into slavery, that father who was showing prefer preferential treatment to Joseph, he wanted, was not able to see him for that long time. So I believe Joseph, like in his, it was like his adolescent years is when he was, when he was taken or sold into slavery. And... He ended up having to be away from his father for all the time until he was a grown, 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 grown man leading um, with a second in command to that king or to Pharaoh. So you see how showing preferential treatment to one child cause the father to not even get to like spend <laughs> his, his spend time with the growing child. So. It's very important as parents that you don't show preferential treatment. You don't end up, you know, giving a child the benefit of death just because you like that child better. It's just wrong, right? It is wrong. Um, so my point in talking about Joseph is this. I want to just make a side note for that because that's an angle I think we don't necessarily normally think about. We know Joseph ended up, you know, being put in bad situations, but we never really think about one, him telling the dream. He didn't really realize that wasn't a dream he was supposed to share. And then also the father essentially putting him in harm's way and not even being able to be around Joseph for a very long time because he was showing preferential treatment. That is not what God would have wanted him to do. Okay. So then from there, we, what I can say is Joseph ended up in prison. He was a dream interpreter or dream, dream interpreter so he ended up interpreting dreams for two prisoners and both dreams came to pass one was full, um, favorable for one prisoner the other one was highly unfortunate for the other prisoner and you know the prisoner who had the good situation left he had promised he was gonna always look back for joseph and he did not so joseph was stuck in prison still then later on um oh 
I think I missed the part when where he was sold into slavery then he was working in Potiphar's house and then he was thrown into jail because of him being falsely accused the lady liked him she thought he looked so nice although she was married to Potiphar she ended up trying to take him and sleep with him so he ended up in prison for that even though he did nothing she tricked people and then afterwards I mentioned a prison story and then what happened was finally when the pharaoh had this sort of strange dream he needed an interpreter finally the prisoner who had the favorable situation after joseph interpreted his dream finally when the pharaoh needed someone to interpret his dream he thought of him said, oh i remember there was someone when i was in prison he told me that this was gonna happen and it happened oh yeah what about him so he came he interpreted the dream what he saw in the dream was that his dream signified that there would be seven years of plenty and seven years of lack. So Joseph was able to store grain for the people in that first seven years of abundance. And for the seven years that followed, that's where he was eventually reunited with his family. His brothers were so sorry for what they had done. Of course, it took a while to get to that point um, where they actually realized who he was and were able to, to recognize what he did was wrong. But anyway... My point about Joseph is, listen. <laughs> One second, maybe. My point about Joseph is this. You do not know your future destiny. You may be down here. You don't know what the future is going to hold. You don't know what God has in store for you. Joseph went through so many different trials. Here, baby. Joseph went through so many different trials, so many issues in his life, and he had no idea what the outcome was going to be. Yes, he had that dream where he was going to be risen up by the Lord, but he didn't know how. He didn't know when. God is always there. God is always there in every trial and tribulation. Do not ever grow weary because God is with you. No matter what trial you have, God is going to be there. God wants you to just trust in him. Remember what he called you to do. Remember what he placed you on this earth for. And had Joseph not gone through all those different trials, I, I, I really do like that story. I think that's a good one of my, one of the, one of the Bible stories that I enjoy. Although I enjoy many, but that's one of my, my favorites. I'll say in my top 10. He went through a lot of different trials. But God was still with him. No matter what happened, God was still with him. God was leading him, guiding him. Every single trial that he endured was making him stronger little by little. It was allowing him to get to that point in time where he was going to be able to lead the people and be the second in command to Pharaoh. Don't always think that, oh my gosh, my life is so bad. All these things keep happening. No, God might be using those trials to strengthen you. You won't be able to get to where he wants you to be if you do not trust in him and walk with him and go through those different trials and tribulations. If you have such a big call on your life, you don't know how much character you need to have to even be able to handle what God wants to give you. Even thinking about money, right? Or let's say you're going to have a mansion one day in the future, right? You have to be able to manage what you have now. You might start off small. Let's say you are going to have millions in the future, right? You're going to have to start off small. You're going to have to use what you have wisely. So don't think that trials are bad things. Trials really grow you without those trials. A lot of times when you have trials, a lot of trials in your life, just know that God wants to use you in a magnificent way, especially if those trials are are unrelated to like your own your own stuff like let's say it's just things happen to you you don't know how it's always something always something you've been trying you've been trying and then also you may find that if you go into the same thing over and over it's because you you still haven't passed the test right so if you are going into certain situations over and over and over where it seems like it's the same thing happening over and over you have not perfected that character trait yet. you have not succeeded in, in that particular area of your life so you may keep enduring things like that until you're able to overcome god will put you through tests or god will allow you to be tested i should say and it's really going to be up to to you to to realize when it's time for you to um i guess i guess pass the test <laughs> 
So yeah, be encouraged everyone. Not every trial is a bad thing. A lot of trials are ways to, to, to really grow you. And I think I mentioned before, like I, there was certain things that I asked God to do in me. And when I, once I asked for those things, a lot of different things started happening. A lot of different trials came and I was like, oh, that's what God was doing. 